Hi Micro folks, this is March 17, 2020. Um, this is a movie discussing chapter 14 in our lab manual, Control of Microbial Growth, and we're going to talk about disdiffusion studies here. So in disdiffusion folks, the, the idea is um, we're going to swab our plate to get confluent growth, you might recall, and then we're going to plate on the surface, we're going to place, excuse me, on the surface of the swab plate discs, filter discs, that have been um, 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 soaked in different um, chemicals, for example. So in the first experiment that's described on page 161 of your lab manual, we were going to compare, um, using the disdiffusion study, different antiseptics and disinfectants. So for example, for each of the bacteria we tested, we would swab three plates, we would divide the plates in half, and then we would place filter discs soaked in six different chemicals, um, one disc on each half the plant, of the plate. So for example, we are going to test our lab disinfectant. We are going to test um, ethanol and alcohol. We are going to test tincture of iodine, which is um, iodine um, dissolved in alcohol. Um, we are going to um, test 1 to 10 freshly diluted bleach. Um, Lysol, the tub and tile cleaner for your bathroom. And then we are going to do dish, dish soap, right? So. Um, and then, folks, just to give you the principle behind this diffusion, I just made a couple of cartoons that we would have put up on the board. So the idea, folks, in, in this little goofy car, um, cartoon, which looks like my, my auger plate is tilted here. So you guys, this is a cross-section through our auger plate. This is the auger. The little dot, dot, dots represent the bacteria that we swabbed over the surface of the plate. And then this little blue, it re represents the disc that has been um, soaked in a chemical. So we'll just call the chemical X. So as soon as we touch the disc to the surface of the plate, we let it go wherever it touches, because immediately the, the um, chemical is going to start diffusing into the auger, setting up a concentration gradient. So the highest concentration of the chemical will be in the auger right below the disc. And as we get further and further away from the disc, the concentration of the chemical decreases. Right? So the lowest concentration of the chemical would be in the auger right by the walls of the plate. And the highest concentration of the chemical would be in the auger right below, right below the disc. Okay? So um, again, this is going to set up a chemical concentration gradient. We incubate the plates. And then after incubation, we pull the plates and we look for a zone of inhibition. And I hope we can see this here. Right? So this is, this is one of our demo plates from we've done previously. So hopefully you can see this. This is a, a plate that we swabbed. And we put, in this case, an antibiotic disc on the surface of the swab plate. And you can see there's, hopefully you can see there's a clear zone around the disc. OK, so what is that clear zone? So I got another cartoon. So folks, let's pretend this is my disc. Here, excuse me, this is my plate. So here's my plate. This um, gray pencil shading represents the lawn of bacteria. And this little circle with an X in it represents my disc soaked in chemical X. And that clear zone around the disc, folks, where no bacteria are growing, it's called the zone of inhibition. And what's really cool is that we can determine where in the auger the MIC, the minimal inhibitory concentration of chemical X is. So the MIC is the, the smallest concentration of chemical X that will inhibit or kill the bacteria. So we know the MIC um, will be found in the auger right at the border, the edge of the zone of inhibition. Right? Now, you might say, well, well, who cares? Well, we can compare different chemicals based on the diameter of the zone of inhibition. And the diameter, you guys, let me see if I can use my little, my little ruler here. So you want to remember that the diameter is the distance from one side of a circle through midpoint to the opposite side. So we would say, uh, if we're comparing two chemicals, the chemical that creates the largest zone of inhibition is going to be the most powerful, the most effective, because it means at really low concentrations, it's still inhibiting or killing the bacteria. The opposite, folks, of that would be, what if the bacteria grow right up to the disc? There's no zone of inhibition. We know that chemical is worthless against that particular um, bacterium. 
So again, folks, um, in our experiment, we would compare the diameters of the zones of inhibition with those antiseptics and disinfectants, and then we try to draw some conclusion, which was the best chemical at inhibiting or killing the bacteria, which, which, uh, which chemicals were the worst. And furthermore, folks, we were going to compare gram-negative bacteria, like E. coli, against gram-positive bacteria, say Staphylococcus epidermidis. And we were going to um, see if the gram negatives overall were more resistant to our, our um, chemicals or was, were the gram positives um, more resistant to our chemicals. So I think what we'll do is um, we'll, we'll do the results part maybe in another video and, and discuss um, historically what kind of results we got. All right. So then, folks, um, as we said, we were going to compare our antiseptics and disinfectants in one experiment and gather as data the diameters of the zone of inhibition to make some conclusions. And then, folks, for um, chapter 14, lab number two, we we're going to do diffusion studies. Um, um, and specifically, we we're going to do the Kirby-Bauer diffusion studies for antibiotic sensitivity testing. And this table, you guys, it would be really important. It's on page 163 in your lab manual. So th there's a, it's kind of a cool challenge, folks, because if we're talking about antibiotic sensitivity testing against human bacterial pathogens, we have another challenge, and that is we have to know what concentrations of antibiotics we can safely achieve in our patients, you know, what therapeutic levels of antibiotics can we safely achieve in our, pa in, in our patients. Um, and then the challenge is um, we have to somehow know um, for the M, for um, for any given bacterial pathogen, the MIC for a specific antibiotic, we have to know can we get that level of antibiotic, that MIC in our patient? And you might think, how the heck are we going to do that? Well, Kirby and Bauer did all the research um, to correlate diameters of zones of inhibition with all the different antibiotics with whether you could safely achieve that MIC in a patient, if you could safely achieve it, if it was even possible. And what they did with all that data was they developed these fantastic um, zone of inhibition um, diameter interpretive charts. And what these charts do, in, in this is just a, a sample of them, you guys. There's like hundreds and hundreds of antibiotics in the real charts. Um, what, what these tables do, they let us find the diameter of inhibition, the, excuse me, the diameter of the zone of inhibition for our bacterium. And let's just do it, you guys. So this is our Enterobacter orogenes, and this is a Bactrim disc. And Bactrim, you guys might remember, is a combination of sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim, the sequential inhibitors of folic acid synthesis. So you guys, I'm gonna, let's see here, I need to get the diameter here. So we're gonna say it's 2.5 centimeters and we need to express the diameters in millimeters. So 2.5 centimeters is how many millimeters? It would be 25, okay? So there's 10 millimeters in a centimeter. Okay, so I gotta remember that. So it's back drum and my zone of inhibition is 25 millimeters. So what I do is on my chart, I find Bactrim, and there it is. Um, um, oop, and it's misspelled there, you guys, sorry. SXT, that's the Bactrim. It should be B-A-C-T-R-I-M, or it's telling you the active ingredients are trimethoprim with sulfamethoxazole. And folks, recall that our diameter was um, 25. So I'm just going to use my ruler here, and I'm going to go to the first column, and it says, is my diameter less than 10 millimeters? And 25 is not less than 10, so I keep going. Is my diameter, sorry, you guys, it's like we're on a rocking boat here. Um, is my diameter between 11 and 15 millimeters? And no, it's not. 25 millimeters is not between 11 and 15. And I come over here to the last column, you guys. Is 25 millimeters greater than 16? And the answer is yes. So I go straight up. And the table is telling me that that bacterial pathogen, that Enterobacter orogenes that we isolated from our patient, it's sensitive or susceptible to therapeutic levels of Bactrim, meaning it'll be inhibited or killed by Bactrim. So you could give that patient Bactrim, and it should kill that pathogenic strain of Enterobacter orogenes. So folks, you'll see here there's these different antibiotics. So we'll do another movie um, giving 
um, zones of inhibition um, with different antibiotics so we can practice going over this table because this would be important to know how to use for the lab exam and maybe even for your um, unknowns. If we have to do unknowns online, we might try to develop them into actual clinical cases and try to um, get you to determine which antibiotics the bacteria would be sensitive or resistant to. But that's going to come a lot later, you guys. Okay, so we're going to close this here.